Biggie boy. Hello. Are you going to help me pick some books again? We've got a stack down there. I'm going to pick some books out. Come on in, monkey. I made homemade stuffing balls. I'm going to try one. Oh. Hello. I finished reading this last night, Porno by Irvin Welsh. My copy of it is 480 odd pages and I looked on Goodreads and apparently the initial publication was like 600 pages. So that explains why the print is super tiny. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. Basically it's the sequel to Train Spotting, and we follow what happens when uh, Sick Boy decides to film and edit a porno. And uh, Juice Terry's in it, Mark Renton comes back from Amsterdam to finance it. Begbie's around as well, he got out of jail and uh, he's after rent and he wants to kill him. And yeah, it was just a real like pleasure to go back to these characters. I also think some of the characters I might have come across in short stories by Welsh as well. It's kind of hard to keep track of them all. And um, also, uh, that was for the that was for my uh, my that was for my my cat picks my TBR video as well, which kind of fell by the wayside because this was the third of the three books for it, and I've been reading it for like a month, so I can finally film my review of this for that now, and uh, get that published and then do a new My Cat Picks My TBR. And I've also almost finished The Long Utopia here as well by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. I'm on page 410 of 440, so I'll finish that soon. And actually, also my cookbook. Um, I've been cooking stuff today, so I made these, um, I'll show you. This cookbook, my Bosch cookbook. I've also got this super exciting new oven glove, which is literally just one glove. So yeah, I made these, these are my like stuffing balls. So they got like breadcrumbs in it. They look a bit brown. That's because it's wholemeal bread that I used. So I use this bread over here. I've used three quarters of a loaf on this. All right, let's go in here. How's this doing? This needs a lot longer yet. Yeah, it needs like another 45 minutes, an hour, but I've been making this. Look at this. It's a nut roast. That looks really impressive. I'm quite impressed by that. So I'm just going to give it a bit longer to cook. And then, yeah. And then I'm gonna make some, I got one other recipe, that's what it's supposed to look like when it's done. And then I'm gonna make um, onion gravy as well. That's the third of three recipes in this that I wanna try. Yeah. And then that's this book done. And then I'm on 150 books currently reading. And I'm trying to get that down. And my record low is 146. So yeah, I better get reading. All right, here we go. We have the stuffing balls here, and that is my nut roast, and uh, a homemade onion gravy, onion and red wine, and I'm watching Jack Septicai play Resident Evil. Oh, this is broken. God dang it! Oh, moths. Why are you sitting like that? All right, it's, it's kind of weird. I love how big my shotgun is now. Started off as just a little boy. Now it's a big son of a bitch. Looks like a kangaroo. All right, my camera's on low battery, so I'm gonna try and get through this as quickly as I can. Uh, I finished reading Shoplifting from American Apparel by Tao Lin and enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. His writing style isn't for everybody, but I've just enjoyed his work in the past and enjoyed this too. Uh, he's probably like, he's considered to be quite controversial. He's like a bit of a Marmite figure where people either love him or they hate him. I tend to quite like his work, so I gave it a four out of five and I think like a novella. It's great, nice little way to get, you know, to get to know his stuff. Uh, and now I'm going to pick up The Long Cosmos by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter, which is book number five of five. So that's very exciting. Also, my current physical TBR is down to 149 books, and my record low this year has been 146, and I'm trying to get it below that. Preferably below 100 by the end of the year. That'd be good. All right, I better go because it's flashing at me and it's not very happy. I'm watching Jack Septicai play Resident Evil 2, the remake. Why am I so yellow? I don't know, I'm just looking unhealthy. Uh, yeah, watching like Let's Plays on YouTube works really well for me because I don't have time to play games these days. So I can watch him play stuff while I'm writing and that kind of thing. Um, I had a rude awakening today at about half six. This man who's woken me up before, basically he bangs on my window and shouts at me about my rubbish because bit my bins are outside the front of my house by the street. And um, 
like basically because I live in this rough area and it's also highly trafficked, people use my bins. All right, I'm on the tripod, which you may recognize from how I film my videos, but I thought I need my hands free really to hold this anyway. So this is uh, Bish Bash Bosh by uh, Henry Firth and Ian Theesby. So I finished this recipe book today. Basically for me, I've finished a recipe book once I've tried all the recipes in there that I want to try. And every time I get a new one, I go through and like select all the ones I want to go through. And this one was probably like 4.25 out of 5. There was loads of really good recipes in this. There were a few that I just didn't eat, not like I wasn't interested in, but you're going to get that with any recipe book. And I mean, the, the food that I just made and just showed you was made out of, out of this one. So there's that. I also finished reading The Long Utopia by uh, Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter over here. I finished reading that. And so, that then has moved me on to what I just got in the post. I'm going to read Shoplifting from American Apparel by Tao Lin because it's not very long. And then I'm going to go on to The Long Cosmos by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter because it's the long one, the last one in that, that series of five books. So that's my reading plan. And then I have this this uh, Veg Every Day by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. This is the next and final cookbook I have to work through at the moment. But it's good because then I find like recipes that I like and then I add them to my like overall cheat sheets. So for example, now I can make a banging nut roast. Yeah. I made Herbie peanut tea and noodley salad. Very exciting. Thank you. 
28th of August. Uh, some st I've been having a pretty stressful time with my mental health and some stuff in my personal life and whatnot that I don't really want to talk about. Um, but that's why the vlogging has been a little bit sporadic. Um, I have still been reading though, so I've got some books to update you on. And uh, I did a little. I've got a little like mini haul that I filmed recently. So I've got some like little books that I've been reading as well. I mean, I suppose the main thing to point out is Insomnia by Stephen King. Which I'm on page 662 of, I don't know, 760 or so of this. So I'm hoping to read this soon. Funnily enough, I haven't slept and it's half eight in the morning. So, yeah. I mean, not because of the book, just because I have insomnia. So there's that, but it's alright so far. To be honest, the main thing, I'm not particularly enjoying the story. Some of the ideas are cool, but the main thing that it's interesting for is how it ties in with the wider Stephen King universe. Because there's loads of stuff about Carr, like the section I'm reading is called The Crimson King. We just had literally a reference to these characters have to save this kid, because if not, the tower's going to fall down. So, it's an important book in the Stephen King universe because of that, but I'm still not particularly interested in it. Uh, I also read this book which I recently picked up, which is Eldegard Peach, Lives of the Great Scientist, Charles Darwin. This is a ladybird book, and these are like old non-fiction books for kids, basically. And I just pick them up every now and then when I see them in charity shops. I gave this one like a 3.5 out of 5, it's pretty good if you want to learn about Darwin. I don't know, some of the language was a bit odd though, because it was almost addressing the fact that some people don't believe in like the theory of evolution and stuff and natural selection and people misunderstand it as well like in this they said like oh you may have heard of Darwin as the man who thinks we're all de like descended from monkeys and I'm pretty sure he said we were all just like I'm distant cousins of apes but actually we're not even descended from them we have a shared common ancestor that was neither human nor ape so anyway uh, <laughs> And then there is uh, Rommel Gunner Who by Spike Milligan, which is one of his war memoirs. He uses quite a few racist terms in this that 
were probably out of order even in what like when this was published in the 70s because he would have been like an older man i guess then and he was kind of going with like 1940s style racism so some of that was a little bit troubling and his humor is a little bit hit and miss for me but overall the hits make it worth the misses i gave this like a 3.5 out of 5 i think it's worth reading because of its historical significance and if you like spike milligan and the goon show and that kind of stuff or if you're interested in the war which i am uh, I'm slowly working my way through these books. I don't think I'll ever reread them, but I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to read them once, and I think that'll be good enough for me. So yeah, I'm going to finish reading Insomnia, and then I don't know what I'm going to pick up next, but something else. Also, Biggie is over there in the door. Yeah, he, he had a little fluff ball on his back that I had to trim off, but luckily he didn't end up with a bald patch. Hello, uh, quick update. I have been doing lots of filming today. I made some dwarvish battle bread from the disc world uh, I also finished reading insomnia so I'm filming a review of that kind of as we speak today really and getting it all edited and stuff and I'll also be talking about it in my my cat picks my TBR video but yeah it was it was okay it was a 3.25 out of 5 in the end I don't think I have anything new to add since earlier today because I was near the end anyway and now I have just picked up George Orwell such such were the joys uh, which is like a small essay basically it's like 56 pages long or something so I'm, I'm trying to work on getting back down to below 146 books currently reading my, that was my record low is 146 currently reading and then I bought five more books and now I think I'm on 149 something like that although I need to update it because one book's gone missing so I need to replace it and then another book never showed up so technically I'm on 147 which is a maximum break for snooker, which I've been watching loads of snooker on YouTube recently as well. I don't know, well, it's been helping with my anxiety and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know how it is, you know how it is. All right. All right, I've fin finished all my other filming and to all intents and purposes, I've finished reading Such Such with the Joys by George Orwell. It's basically all about his, it's like an essay about his youth in like the English schooling system and with boarding schools and corporal punishment and like casual homosexuality and all of that stuff. And uh, it's all right. I mean, I don't really find that a very interesting subject matter. So although Orwell wrote it very well, it's, it's, yeah, I gave it like a 3.25 out of 5. I'm just glad I have read it. I think I might even have read it before and it didn't leave much of an impact on me. So, so yeah, but it is another one. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And I think that actually puts me back onto 146 books currently reading on my physically owned TBR which is like my record low of this year and I'm trying to get that down so that's good all right and next up I'm going to pick up uh, Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino the screenplay all right off to be more productive oh I think I, I have these little bits of black on my face because I did one of those nose strips and I've literally just peeled it off so that I could film I'm so metrosexual <laughs> um what is it? It's Saturday, the 31st of August. Uh, I mean, I've been busy working a lot recently, so personal lives have changed. Uh, I don't really want to talk about that too much. Basically, Bex and I have separated just for practical reasons, if nothing else, um, like compatibility things and stuff. And I've been having a lot of problems with my anxiety and like social anxiety, my depression as well. And like I haven't been coping in the healthiest ways, so I'm I'm gonna be working on that. Uh, but also I might be moving back to Tamworth, which is like the town I grew up in. Uh, I'm thinking about doing that in like the new year in March, when my tenancy for this place runs out. Partly because like I'll be closer to, partly because I'll be closer to my family and stuff. But also like the cost of living's a lot cheaper, so I can like spend less time freelancing, get a bit of a better work-life balance, and. Uh, you know, hopefully get some more books out. Actually, also speaking of books, uh, the sequel to Driven, Netflix and Kill, is going to be coming out in April 2020. So that's good. The publishers have picked that up. Uh, and then I have some books to update you on. I don't, I don't think I have any plans this weekend really, other than working. Oh, another thing that happened is that somebody either stole my bank card or maybe it fell out of my pocket and they picked it up. I don't know, but they were using contactless on it and spent like 120 quid. But luckily I reported it to Nat West on the phone today and they're gonna reimburse me, so that's not too bad. But just more stress. I don't need all this stress, man. 
Anyway, I finished reading uh, Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino, and then I watched the movie of it. I have seen the movie before. This is pretty cool because it has like some photos in it. Also has some scenes in it that were written different initially, and were then like adapted uh, and like the updated for the movie. And so that was kind of cool because then like. You, they would like include both so they kind of write this new screenplay for what ended up in the movie and you also see what the original stuff was I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 because I mean it's Pulp Fiction it's a masterpiece really and uh, yeah hard to fault it and, and I enjoy reading screenplays anyway then I read Night by Eli Weisel I think that's how you say his name I don't know it's a Holocaust memoir book it's obviously very very sad it's also the first book in a trilogy which I didn't realise and uh, I'm going to be doing a full review of this so I don't want to talk too much about it, but yes, yeah, stunning, another 4.5 out of 5, I can totally see why it's in like, the syllabus, and um, yeah, would recommend if you haven't read it already. And then I read The Dogs of Humanity by Colin Dardis, uh, this was one I was sent for review by Isabel Kenyon, who is the editor of Fly on the Wall Press, they do a lot of stuff about uh, like mental health, and uh, all of these are sort of dog themed as well, I'm trying to find you a shortish one that I could read. Fishing for Tom French. Took the sailboat out again today. It's a distant shore now, getting further and further away, shallower even. Still, once navigated, you can drop down, deny the year's advancing winds, and just float. I have little say over where the anchor plums. A lazy duck on a canal's soft current breaking at my back. Some days, nothing bites and the sea is gone. All the fishing's good. I reel her in, inspect the catch, judging weight, scent scales slipping in my hands. I feel comfortable in returning them to this ocean's shift. So yeah, I enjoyed this, uh, probably a pretty solid 4 out of 5 for me, and uh, actually I must remember to ask her if uh, she can send me copies or something, do me some sort of deal on uh, the remaining chat books in their series, because I really enjoyed everything that Fly on the Wall has published so far. And now I'm reading Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami, which is like, it started out as a bedtime book, but I'm getting into it a little bit more than I thought I would. It's kind of magical realism, which isn't really my thing, and to be honest, half the time I don't really know what's going on. And this translator uh, isn't like my favourite, I think it's Jay Rubin that I normally enjoy. And this is translated by... I can't even find... Alfred Bimbaum, or is that who did the intro? I don't know, it's not very well... Oh, yeah, yeah, Alfred Birnbaum, that's it. And I've not read any of his Murakami translations before, but I'm not really enjoying this one. But oh well, I mean, the, I'm, I'm like enjoying reading it for the sake of reading it and we'll finish it soon. Okay, it's filming day today as well. It's mint pesto with some tomatoes and homemade vegan parmesan. This morning, well, okay, so I didn't go to sleep last night. Uh, so I've been up, I started recording at about half seven, quarter to eight this morning and got a new song done. Where's my new song? It's got this really nice bass to it. I'll link to it below as well. I did like the bass line. It's called Cole Porter. Anyway, 
So I was doing that this morning. Uh, in terms of books, I've finished all the recipes now from River Cottage Veg Every Day by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, which is one of my cookbooks. And I count them as read once I've tested all the recipes that I want to test. This is alright, I'll probably give this like a 4 out of 5. So it's in my top 5 vegan cookbooks, even though it's a vegetarian cookbook, but you can make the recipes vegan. Uh, but that's not saying much because I've probably only read eight cookbooks or something. But yeah, four out of five is pretty good. Some really good recipes and I particularly enjoyed the herby, peanutty and noodley salad. Come over to my uh, vegan food YouTube channel, Dane's Vegan Journey, if you want to see some of the recipes in action, I guess. And then I have just pretty much finished reading Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. This was difficult to get into at first, but after the first 100 pages or so, I switched it out from my bedtime book to my main book, and I have no regrets. It's very beautifully written, even though the translation wasn't great. Storyline was fan fascinating, very weird, but that's what Murakami does, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's what... It kind of is like magical realism, but it, it reminded me actually of Stephen King's Dark Tower books. Only King's books are better, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I read it for sure. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5. And then next up, I'm going to read uh, Sharda, a Doctor Who story by Douglas Adams and Gareth Roberts. Which is literally what it sounds like, a Doctor Who novel, but with Douglas Adams' input, which is pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to try reading this and see how I get on. And if I don't enjoy it, it's going to go out as a bedtime book. But anyway, that is it for this week's vlog as it's a Sunday and I'm not going to get too much more done and I should probably bring this to a halt. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.